Good day viewers all over the world. Nice having you today on our channel. We hope to be a blessing to you as usual. Today we are discussing compatibility in relationship. Compatibility in relationship. And then here with me in the studio is uh, Faith Joseph. And myself, I'm Joseph Olugoye. And then we hope to bring you much blessing. A light of what we want to do today includes who want to open your eyes to understand the compatibility in relationship and then uh, the areas you need to check for compatibility of whosoever is going out or want to go out with you. And I pray that the Lord will bless you richly in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's start. Why this broadcast is important to us. And we have two mandates here. The first mandate is God has instructed us to enlighten the next generation from the spiritual thing. And marriage is particularly spiritual. And that is number one reason why this broadcast is important to us. Number two, we see that there is enough communicable divorce in our world today. And everywhere you turn to, there's divorce. We hear this divorce. Just last week, I went to attend to another family still on divorce. The husband had written the letter of divorce. So we need to enlighten everybody so that God said he hates divorce, so that we will not fall into what God said he hates. Come along with us today as we give you 10 areas where you should check your compatibility before you step into marriage. God bless you. Amen. Our text is taken from the book of um, Amos 3.3. 3. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Say, can two work together except they agree? Can two work together except they agree? Wow, it is profound. Um, two people does not work together except they agree. And the scripture is asking, can two work together except they agree? So there must be an agreement. There must be an agreement in between two people, two parties, before they could work together. And there's not going to be friction. There's not going to be argument. There's not going to be conflict. And that is what the Bible is saying, that can two work together except they, be in, they agree. So it is important that the two people that determine to run a life journey together should come to an agreement. And the second text is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 18. Verse 18. And the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an mate for him. That, yeah, yeah, the Lord is saying that it is, it is not good that a man should be alone. However, God did not say, I'm going to make him a, the help that is not suitable for him. Still talking about agreement. You understand that scripture? Yes, sir. Still talking about agreement that two must come to agreement. So our help that is in me, that is suitable, that we fit, that we meet in. So it will become a challenge when you go into a relationship with someone who do not agree with you. And that is why this teaching is very important. Someone who cannot meet any need. Any need. Someone who cannot meet a need. Mm. So it is very important. Thank you. And so, sir, with the definition, I think, uh, with the definition, what I can drive out now is that it's very important for you to even to understand the partner. Yeah, yeah. That is why you can even meet any need. That is where compatibility comes. Yes. Now, compatibility grammatically is defined as the ability of two things to coexist without conflict, mm. to live together without conflict. But when you are living together and you didn't agree, then there must be a fight, there must be conflict, and that is why most of the time there's separation. Thank you. We have talked about the definition of compatibility. We've drafted out from the Bible what the, what the Word of God says concerning a marriage or relationship. Yes, I believe even if you are not married yet, your relationship will lead to marriage. And what cannot work during relationship may likely not work. It won't. It won't. <laughs> so, so what are the things you think we can do? Yeah, I mean the compatibility check. What to look into while in relationship? Okay. What to watch out for? Yeah. What the 
I will say the, the flags the area to check to 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 to, to, to take notes while in relationship before just going to the church and say I do. Yeah, thank you. And we're gonna be sharing with you ten areas where you should check your compatibility in relationship. Every single in the house, listen to me. Every married individual, listen to me. Ten areas why you should check your compatibility. And number one, we are talking about character. Character is very essential. Look at the life of the person. Is this person, is his character godly? Is, the, is his character holy? Is, if this person comes along with me, what will people say? How will I feel if this person is behaving like this? So you should check the character of the person. And then you will be able to say that, this person is good for me. This person has come to agree with me, what I believe. But if his behavior, this, you dislike his behavior, and it did not change over time, it is not, there's no need going into relationship with such an individual. Such an individual, individual will end up crashing your relationship. And it is very important. Number one is character. Take note of that. And what do you have to say about character? Yeah, character is, uh, just like you said, number one is number one. Even I think before you even approach anybody, you might have seen something concerning the person's character. Though you may not know to the fullest, but you maybe you just like something about the person, the way the person is doing so. And when you now get close, watch furthermore to see maybe the character is genuine, it's acceptable to you, and you can live by it. That's the number one thing. That's what I have to say. Character is the most important thing first. Thank you. So please, my sister, my brother, check the character of this person. Is it godly before you are you agree to go into marriage with such an individual? If his character is always odd, please, I encourage you don't move further with that relationship. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. Here we are talking about Christian relationship, right? Yes. Because. If you are not, if, if a person is not even born again, forget about character. Mm -hmm. We are talking about Christian believers. Yeah? Yes, believers, not uh, the unbelievers. So mm -hmm. don't say because they say character is number one. Then you see an unbeliever, you say you have character, mm -hmm. and you now jump into a relationship. So we are talking about Christians, eh, right? Okay. Yeah. Number two is faith and spiritual. Now, well, spirituality and faith, if they are very good aspect you should check in your relationship now because it is no can two work together except they agree while i said uh, we want to go to church you said we are going to mosque so check it out did this person believe in what i believe did he believe in jesus will this person not draw me back in the area of my service to god so it is very important you, if I said, should we go and then uh, pray? You said, no, you want to go to party. So, so that one day someone will not just bring chicken to your house and begin to slaughter it on your bedroom and said, you want to cast out him on your bed. Check the area, the spirit, the faith of that person. Is this, is, did this person believe in me? Did they believe in what I believe in? And that is the basis why you should check your faith. So that two people, two different persons will just be living together in their house and then at the end of the day, they will fight and separate. So please, like I, I, I was discussing with a couple, a young couple, just a young couple, and then the, the, the man was telling that she, if, I, if he asked him, let us go to church, he does not want to go to church. Please check the areas of faith. This, this person come believe me, how can light and darkness coexist? It's not possible. They will fight. And that is where people divorce. And God say, I hate divorce. Thank you. It is very good. Check your faith. Check our faith. Is this person born again? Does this person believe in what I believe? So it is very important. Check it out. If he cannot stand with you on a, a clear ground on what you believe, it is not good to go into a relationship with such an individual. You cannot marry an unbeliever. If you marry an unbeliever, Get ready to have Satan as your father-in-law. Hope you get that. So it is very good. Don't go into a relationship with someone who does not believe your faith. Thank you. And number three is what? Yeah, the number three 
thing here is uh, the medical aspect of it. Okay. So, although so many people overlook this aspect, and it's very, very important. Yeah, we have faith, and we believe God, but you can't choose God's miracle for him. So, some people will say, I love him. When If we are married, God will, God will make everything right. Meanwhile, you know there is a problem. So, you take note of the genotype. You take note of the blood group and the resource compatibility. These three things, things they are very important. You can't overlook them. Do a blood test that will reveal the genotype of both you and your partner, the blood group and the resource compatibility. If you are not compatible, yes, please, it's advisable you let go. In fact, for the sake of the love you have for each other, and for the sake of the children you bring to this world. Because if your blood group is not compatible and you forced the marriage and went into it, and at the end of the day, you gave birth to a, a, a child that, that will be suffering from a sickle cell or whatever, you will not be happy. Even the child will not be happy. At the end of the day, you will lose so many things. You lose your peace, happiness, joy. You will cause the child pain. And at the end of the day, there will be nothing to, to be happy about. So that love will even fly out of the window. So this is very important. Check your genotype. Check your blood group. Check your resource compatibility. It's very, very important. If you are not compatible, please. Except, I don't know, which is not common. If God said go ahead or any miracle or call. But in, in as much, humanly speaking, if these things are not compatible, it's better you let go. So it's very, very important. Let nobody overlook this before going into marriage. Okay, like my sister had said here, I want to have my own to eat. If God hasn't spoken to you, if you have not heard God, please don't ever go into a relationship without confirming the genotype of such an individual, of your partner rather. Thank you. Thank you. For and also I want to add this concerning the medical uh, aspect of it. If your your partner have a medical challenge, it might not be, we are not talking about a genotype or not or that now. Maybe there is any medical challenge concerning your health related issue concerning your partner and you feel like ah I won't be able to cope with these challenges. It's better you let the person be in peace so that God will connect the person with another person that can cope than forcing your head into it at the end of the day, causing more, adding more pain to the person or to yourself. So let's look into it. Whatever you cannot cope with when you enter marriage, please, during relationship, just avoid it. Thank you for that. And we'll go to the next point. The next point is cleanliness, number four. Cleanliness. So um, I wanted to talk about that. Talking about hygiene and cleanliness. Yeah, that's very important. That's very important. If I don't think so many people can cope with a dirty partner. Let me just say dirty partner. A cool. dirty partner. Yes, like yes, that. yes. If you are not comfortable with the level of your partner's cleanliness and you think you can't change it, because I believe it's something that can be changed. Yeah. I won't tell anybody yeah. to leave his or her partner because of that. You can you can help. You can counsel. What of if the person is not changing? That's what I'm saying. If you, you feel you change. can't change it, if you, if you feel you can't change it, because it's only somebody that wants to change that will change. If you feel that like my partner did not want to change, and you, you can't cope. At times, some partners may not be able to change, may not change, but you will have the grace to cope. If you can cope, fine. But if you know you can't cope, and you know this thing will cause problem, maybe by the end of the day, you'll be beating yourself because uh, she's dirty, or he's too dirty, or he's too mm -hmm. rough. You know you'll be fighting because of this in future. Please, avoid. Avoid such a scenario Thank and you. walk away. Thank you. That is just a wise advice you have heard from my partner here. And uh, let's go to number five. We're talking about hard working and diligence at work and others. So uh, let me say this here. It is very good a man has his work. Have, have your work 
and be diligent at it. If you are engaged to a sister that did not have a work and is just waiting for marriage, it's not good. It's not a good idea. Ask the sister, go get a job. Go ask the, ask the brother, go get a job. If you get a job, then you work together. But someone that is lazy, a lazy individual, bring laziness brings poverty. Like we said, hard work doesn't kill, it brings prosperity. So, therefore, I encourage you, when you are in a relationship and you see that the person is lazy at work, it may be a sign for danger ahead. My pastor will say that no child of anyone that should be a son of anyone that should be your ATM. Oh, and that is the truth. We encourage you, if you check it, and you discover this person is lazy, it may be a sign to run from that relationship. Thank you. The next point here is um, faithfulness. 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 We are talking about chastity here. Am I right? Yes. Faithfulness. Now, you check this person is it faithful. The little time we have been spending in this relationship, is it faithful? Is it, I mean, faithfulness is wide, but it begins from relationship. Is this person committed to me? Is he faithful? Does this person really, uh, does he really mean what he said that I am the sugar in his tea? You get it. But someone who today uh, uses Sister A as GP and post something about it and tomorrow bring your picture and say the same thing about you, you should, be, you should know something is wrong here. It begins from relationship. So you must understand this person is faithful to me. But when he's not faithful, then you know there's a problem. Like I watched I watch yesterday, uh, somebody sent it to me and I saw it. A, a, a sister went to give his, his uh, fiancé birthday gift. And on getting there, he met another lady inside. And then the two ladies began to fight. The boy could not, stop, could not end the fight. And that is pathetic. You must be faithful, be committed to your relationship. See that you do not bring external relationship to, to scatter what you have planted. It is very good. It begins from relationship. You will notice it and see it if you pay attention. If you didn't allow your love to be blind, you will see it there. So I encourage you, please, we encourage you, take note of faithfulness. Stay with one person. It is very good. Yeah, so I mean, concerning the faithful, faithfulness aspect of it, uh, I think it's not only being faithful to maybe, okay, you are the only one I'm marrying now. Yeah, faithfulness goes all around, all around, Thank you. All all around. around about you. Yeah. Is it faithful about his finances? Is it faithful about what he tells you? Is it faithful about his job? Mm -hmm. Any information he gives? Is, is it faithful? In everything, in everything, or there is a shade of doubt, mm -hmm. or is Shadows. he lying, yeah. or is he trying to cover up? So check that ah, whatever he tells me or she tells me is true. Thank you. So check. Don't only don't only look at her. Uh, am I the only one? Is he faithful to only me? Am I faithful for, to only you? I'm but I'm not faithful. In other aspect thank of his you. life, or thank in you. some That's secret, yeah. So, thank you. Be open, be open hearted, be open minded. There's no need hiding anything. You, someone that's the, 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 the Yoruba will say, Oko Kimfara, Kimfara tomorrow. Meaning that someone that will bath you, you don't cover up yourself for that person. So, you, there's no need. You open up yourself. Faithfulness, openness is very good. I pray. This information will be a blessing to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And then the next one. The next one is um sexual history. And I think this should also come under faithfulness. Yes, yes. Sexual history. If you are not faithful enough, you won't be able to give this. So sexual history, like uh, I'm married by God's grace, and when I met my wife, there are things we discuss. And there are things she told me. There are things I told her. So we were able to understand each other because we came out clean. We came out clean. So when it comes about uh, sexual history, please be open up. Open up. 
open up. If the person will marry you because of that, he will. If you will not marry, will you will not marry you. But you kept it, you had an abortion, and then in the course of that, you lost your womb, and you keep it as a secret. You did not tell your partner. That is bad. But the day you got to know, that is the day we cut the relationship off. You get it? So it is very good. So still on that point, uh, if you have used your life anyhow, let him know. If he will marry you, he will marry you. Love look beyond error. Because even when we are yet a sinner, the Bible says Christ died for us. Even when we are yet a sinner, Christ died. So, and to whom much is forgiven, love it much. To whom more is, is forgiven, love it much. So if you try that, to say that if you cover up, it is then you will love him. No. Open up. Let him know your history. You have history. These are the days that people are not proud of virginity. But you should at least preserve your life. And if by what we or the other, something has gone wrong, open up. Let him know. And let him or her know. And I believe he will be able to trust you. That is my opinion. What do you have to say about that? What I have to say concerning the sexual history, you have said it all. And um, it, should, it should start from the beginning. Mm. I mean, the start, moment you enter the relationship, relationship. You should, that should be the first thing. You ask yourself. So that it won't have gone far. Yeah. Before uh, you, you know, the man or the woman will not be regretted that ah. If I've known this, so I wouldn't I won't have. Have, then you start misbehaving. Thank you. From the onset, that the person know. So she know ah, this that I want to enter. Can I? Or uh, so that nobody's feelings will be hurt. Yes. So I think that's. Thank you so much. The next point here is um, kind heartedness. Kind heartedness. Wow. Yes. Yeah, As it is good to the check type of hearts. Uh, the, yes, the type of heart the person you are going with has. And then you, it is best known the way he behaves to other people. Mm. It is best known the way he behaves to other people. If you bring issue to him and he treats it well, check if other person bring issue to him, how does he treat it? You may not, you cannot know if he is, if you focus on how he behaves, how you respond to the issues you brought to him. But if it's a stranger, check how does this person behave to strangers? Mm. How does he talk about strangers? What did he say about them? So that is where you can rate the state of his heart. Mm. But if you didn't, you will not know. Mm. If you go into a relationship with someone with a bad heart, I tell you, you may suffer it for the rest of your relationship. Of course, I have a lecture I will tell you, will tell you your corrupt ideas cannot stop me. Mm. And he mean what he say. So please check the art, the state of art of that person. Does this person has a clean art? Does this person has a kind art? Kind hearted is good in relationship. You enjoy your relationship to fullest. Thank you. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, somebody can be good to you just because uh, he wants something from you. Yeah. He needs yes. something from you or he wants Honestly. to Honestly. Yeah. And or just because he wants to be in a good picture to you mm -hmm. and you think as a nice person, a think good you person. To clean yes. Whereas he's not treating others the same way mm -hmm. or he's not good to so many to people. people. So the only way, just as you have said, is check how the person is treating others. Mm -hmm. Even when you are not there. When you are not there. You can even make your research. How do this person, how how is he treating other people? Mm. Ask people, how is this person? How is this person's behavior? And you get to know better. Yeah. So that's, I think that's a major point. Thank you. And how you can get to know that. Thank you, ma. The next one, number nine, is vision. Yeah. Vision. Did this person have vision or he just live his life aimlessly? You need to know. Right? And did your vision. Yeah. And does vision your vision. Together? Can you work together with someone who has a vision of running a uh, hotel? Or he has a vision of running a uh, beer parlor? And you have a goal of uh, preaching the gospel? You see, it's a two clear different field. So look at. Does the vision of this person work with me? Yes. 
Your vision compatible. Yeah, it's our vision. But if it's not, if we have nothing to add to your vision except scattering and tearing it down, please, I encourage you, you can reconsider the relationship second time. Have second thought. Mm. So, please, it is good. Know the vision of that person and see how you can contribute, how you can meet the need. Like my partner here said the other time, that God did not just bring somebody, bring somebody who come to meet a need in agreement. So you must uh, look into that aspect. Did this person have vision in the first place? If you did not have vision, you can, he, he is not good. You, sh you should not go into a relation with someone who has no vision. So at the end of the day, it will end up being, he or she will end up being a burden unto you. But if he had vision, then, See, is this vision compatible with what I have? Yes. Thank you. One of our brothers, I remember, was in a relationship with a lady that we always say, let's go to party. Let's go party. Let's go party. And this brother is someone that goes to church. Someone that goes to church. And then when he told the lady, let's go to the church, the lady herself said, I don't think I will marry you. You may end up being a pastor. So when the brother, you told the brother, you better get out of this relationship. It won't work well for you. And then today, the brother is happy because he do away with such relationship. And what do you have to say, man? Yeah, you said it all. So the, your vision must be compatible. Yeah. Like for example, maybe you're a lady, you love to sing. Your vision is to move on in music world and then minister in... in in uh, crusades and all that, or Christian activities, yeah, yeah, and you yeah. have a partner that doesn't like that, that does not even want you to go out or do ministration, you know it can work. It can. Yeah, the, 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 the man might, may, might be a born again yeah. Christian, but he might not really support what you are doing. So check, check. not only yeah. that, is he firebrand, is he born again, yeah. is he a pastor, or is he a tonton, that's not enough. Check the vision. Can we work together? Can we move together? What I'm doing and what you want to do, are we compatible? Will he allow me? Will she allow me? So it's very, very important. Please check. This thing has scattered home. That scattered home and it's still scattering home. Mm -hmm. So let this thing not be what we separate you and your partner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then the last one, number 10, is culture. Yeah. Culture. Culture is very important and is good. So uh, I will ask you to check the culture of this person. I do, this person is so addicted to his culture that he cannot be separated. If there are people that have been addicted to their culture and they cannot be separated, please, I will encourage you to look at it if you can marry the person. Check his culture. Does this culture agree with my culture? And then so that you don't go, uh, for, for example, some culture believe in Thai rapper, and you, you never believe in Thai rapper. And then they said, before you can marry that child, you must Thai rapper. So you get ready. You want to marry such a culture that I'm going to Thai rapper. And also some culture don't need them to read. If some don't and need them to For read. example, if you, are, if you are a Yoruba person, you should need them and read your elderly yes. one. But if such person comes and refuse to kneel down for you and you start and you, you, you are not fighting, you, you are angry. And you begin to fight each other. That's the problem. Give the person a slap. Bah, bah. <laughs> you are too rude. You are too rude. So all those things you need to check it. It's, it's, it looks it looks like a minor thing, but mm -hmm. it's, it's very, very important. Yes, check yes. the culture, what they are eating. Can I eat what they are eating? Mm -hmm. Or, okay, if I say I'm not eating, can, so can, not, can she prepare what I want, want or want. Can, can, we go together? can we go together? Can we go together? Can we go together? Did I even, can I stand, stand their language? Yeah. Can yeah. I stand their yeah. language and their behavior? So yeah. if you cannot, it's better you let go. Thank you. So on the concluding note, I want to ask my sister, what would you like to tell your audience? Yeah, what I would like to tell... Of the single uh -huh. sisters there, of the single brothers there. Yeah, what I would like to tell uh, our viewers, our single brother, sister in a relationship, and even those that are married, is that from this video you can still pick a lot of things. Yeah. Or if you are married, you can still work on a lot, lot of things and Your see. Home. Yeah. And as God will help you, it will still work. Amen. So, but if Amen. you are not yet Amen. married, Amen. just Amen. all this we have discussed is not all. Mm. It's not all. You have not. 
We are not here to tell you all. Oh, there are still some things, but at least this little you can walk by it Amen. and Amen. see to it. Amen. Apply it to your Amen. relationship. Yeah. Check it. Check your relationship with this little information Thank and you. see maybe you are good to go. Right. And the Lord will help you. Amen. I also want to tell you we are on the mission to stop divorce, to put an end to divorce. Therefore, uh, all the information here, they are not just a, a cunningly devised verbals. They are information from the Spirit, and they are going to bless you. So take it to it, as we wish you a happy home, as we wish you a best relationship in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray for you. Father, thank you for these people. Thank you, thank you for the time to give them the word of God. Thank you, we bless them. They are blessed in Jesus' Amen. name. Everyone have a challenge in the home. I speak peace to your home in the name of Amen. Jesus. Single brother and sister, believe in God for a good home. I ask that the help needs that you need we come in the name of Jesus. Amen. The help that's suitable for you, we arrive in the name of Amen. Jesus. I tear down a cause of loneliness in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go find a partner in Amen. the name of Jesus. Eyes that see, receive it. Amen. Ears that hear, receive Amen. it. The heart that passive, receive it Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Thank Father. You, Till we come your way next time, Hallelujah. we bless you. We love you. Love you. God bless you. Bye. Bye. So,